All right, so we've got 2D kinematics, also known as projectile, doesn't work, projectile motion. We can just keep doing that. There we go. Uh, just a little projectile motion practice practically. And you'll notice as something flies through the air, it traces out a perfect parabola, nearly at least. And so we throw something like this uh, and it goes in this direction. A few things we want to note uh, at the beginning, its velocity is in this direction, parallel to the path. Actually, at every point, the velocity is parallel to the path. Also, at every point, the acceleration is straight down and equal to g on Earth, 9.8 meters per second squared. Um, those are some of the big things to remember about this. So the velocity actually is parallel to the path all the way throughout. It's smaller at the top, bigger, lower down. Um, and then the, the big thing to note about this here especially is that at the very top, the velocity is not zero, but the vertical velocity is zero. The horizontal velocity is the same as what the initial horizontal velocity was. These are the things you need to remember about projectiles in motion. Uh, now, if we actually go on to try to do a problem in with projectiles, the biggest thing to remember is it's kind of like two independent one-dimensional problems at the same time. What I teach in uh, honors physics is to use a table of values to separate the x and y values. Make sure you keep them separated. I'll show you how that works, but you don't have to do it this way uh, if you don't want to. All right, so this is the table that I often use to help students organize their, their data when doing projectile problems. You don't have to use this if you want to just write down, but the biggest thing to remember is that your x values and your y values are independent and do not mix. The only thing that is shared is the time value. The times are the same throughout the flight. Um, so to start off with, you know, this would be the distance or displacement in the x direction, displacement in the y direction, the initial velocities in each direction. The thing about this to remember is in the horizontal direction, something that's in free, fr free fall, a projectile in this case, uh, is something that has only acceleration straight down 9.8 meters per second squared, no acceleration horizontally. So these are the important things to remember here is that the accelerations are always this when you're doing a projectile. Uh, otherwise, you can find whatever the initial velocity and the final velocity are in this direction are gonna be the same. If you know the initial velocity and some of these displacements, you can go ahead and do the rest. Um, things to note as well, positive y displacement means it lands higher than it started or that it is currently at a point higher than it started when you're analyzing. And a uh, negative number there would mean that it was currently at a lower point than where it started. Otherwise, that's about what you've got there. Um, two last things with this. If you look back at our example here, we've got an initial velocity going up and to the right. So we would have to break that velocity down if this was say 25 meters per second at this angle, we'd have to break it down into X and Y components. Those would be our initial X and our initial Y velocities. Uh, sometimes you'll come across a problem where an object is going straight off of a cliff horizontally and then it begins to fall to the ground. If you have one of these, the thing to remember is it is moving due right in this case. That means it is not moving up, it is not moving down, so the initial velocity in the y direction is zero. These are some of the things that you just kind of have to remember, and then we're gonna use those big four that we've memorized already and uh, just finish these problems off. So that's, that's what you got for this one. Uh, there might be some hints on the assignment if you look there.